If you were looking for a way to easily manage and distribute company resources, documents, guides, and other materials, then check this out. I will show you how to create a simple resource center that can include attachments, links, and an inline document editor. Welcome to our channel. My name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business processes and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, please visit our website below to book a free console. To get started, you will need to log into your SmartSuite account. If you do not have one already, you can create one. There's a link in the description below to get started. So once you set up your SmartSuite account, you can navigate to your workspace and click add new solution. From there, we can click create from scratch. You can name your solution, whatever you want. I will just call it employee resource center. And you can change the colors and the icon of your solution, but I will just leave it as it is. Across the top here, we have different apps that we can add. I will just go in and change this one and rename it to resources. And I can start deleting some of these default fields here. I don't need this assigned to priority or due date. I will leave status. I will get that set up in a moment here as well. There's a few other fields that we'll need to go in and add. So I'm going to add a single select field and I can name it category and types of category. It could be standard operating procedures, maybe training, maybe compensation and benefits categories. We could have forms, maybe policies, and that's good enough for now. A few other fields I want to add. So I'm going to add a smart doc. This is essentially a document editor. So I'll just call this resources. What you can do with this field type is you can basically create a document right in line. Then we'll also add a file or attachments field in case you already have PDFs or images or something that you want to upload that have already been created into some sort of file. And we'll add a links field type as well, in case there's an external link or website that you would need your employees to navigate to, to access the document. So from here, we will also go into the status and modify the field settings. We can change this to something like pending, we can get rid of these two and we'll put this one as active. Maybe we'll add one more. We can make, call it Kai. We can change the color as well. So we'll update that field and title. This will just be our document name. I do have a few sample documents already set up. I'm just going to copy and paste those in, but obviously you'll want to customize your solution and your app to fit your company needs. Once you have your data entered into the resource app, you could also add in an additional field. So this last updated, it comes pre-built. So you just have to go up to the fields to display and select it from the available fields drop down. And then you can see when the specific record document and material has been last updated. So you can see that I have, if I click into the privacy policy, I have the document already created in line. There's also options to be able to add the PDF or another file type. So you can select it and it will open it up. And then there's links here as well, which you can click and it would navigate directly to that website or resource. A few other things to clean up your solution or your app. Uh, we go into this group option and we will group by status. And then we can see what's in pending and active and archive and so on. And then from here, one other thing that we may want to do is navigate up into the top left where it says grid view, we can go add a card view. So with the card view, we'll want to add a few things like attachment. We could maybe want to add the links and the resources directly, and we can reorder them by clicking and dragging here as well. So now we can see that there's the, all the different types of documents and resources in line, and we may want to use the filter option here. So the purpose of this view is we can share a link that your employees would have access to. So if you have something that's been archived or impending, you may not want to display that to your employees. 
So we can just click into filter here. We can scroll down to status. And as long as the status is active, it will show up in this view here. So you could see when I delete this, this populates and it's because it's in the pending view. So I'll just go quickly add that back in. So we just want active documents or resources to populate here. Then we can go into this share view option. We can turn it on and I do want to turn off the allow data to be exported and turn on allow viewers to open records. So I'll just open this up to show you what it looks like. Basically what you would do is just share this link with your employees and then they will have access to something like this so they can see the different uh, documents and different options that you have available to them. One other thing you could do is go into the group option and we could group by category and we can collapse all those. And then I'll just go back into our shared view, refresh the page, and we can see our different options here, such as standard operating procedure forms and so on. So if I just click the drop down, we can see what standard operating procedure it is. We can search by using this find option. If I go to forms, I can see there's the link here, policies, I can open it up and I can see the resource has been added via that document editor. And if we scroll down, there's also been a PDF or a file attached that we can open up to. So you have lots of flexibility and lots of different options available to you by using a resource center similar to this. To take it a step further, let's say that you want to create some sort of company wide calendar. You can go up here, add another app, we'll call it important dates, and we will set up the fields that we need for this as well. So we can delete a few of these like we did the other one and we'll start fresh here. We can add a plain text or just a text field. We'll call this name. So this will be our event name or date, however we want to identify it. We can add something like a description. So we can bring in a smart doc for that. If we want, just call it info. We'll add a date field and we can add a formula field as well. And what that is going to do is we're going to go into the advanced editor and we'll extract the year from the date so that it's easier for us to organize our application. I'm going to go up here and rename this just simply to year. The last thing I might want to do is go over to this title. We'll click the auto generated type of title and we'll just bring in the document name and we'll bring in the, or sorry, I said document, but I meant important date name. So the event name, and we'll bring in the year as well. And then we can go ahead and start adding a few options. So maybe we want to add our annual general meeting. We can select the date for this and you can see it extracts the year here for us. We can add a few other options. Maybe we have a summer barbecue and we can pick a date for that. And maybe we want to add something like end of the third quarter and we can select date for that as well. So this is just somewhere where we can easily share information about important dates with our employees and add all of the important dates here in a grid type view. But we can also go up to our views, add a new view and share a calendar view. And what that will do is it will bring in based off the date and the name of the event or record that you have added so that we can easily share and click into to view information about various dates that might happen across the company. I'm just going to quickly touch on another tool and software as well. It's called Easy Portal. It integrates directly with SmartSuite. It was built specifically to integrate with SmartSuite. So it is pretty handy. It is in the early days. So there's some features that are not quite yet ready, but I will show you quickly how to get started with it. Or if you have employees that need to be able to access some of this information, it might even be easier to use something like Easy Portal as your front end for this type of thing. So using our resources table and data, I will navigate into Easy Portal and I'm basically going to create a portal that allows employees to access those resources. 
So you can go in once you have an account created to generate a new app. And then in the settings here, we will need to manage a data source. So we'll have to connect smart suite directly to it. So you can go ahead and log in and do your authentication. And now I have smart suite as a data source. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new page and I'm just going to call it resources. And from here, I'm going to add a new block. Now we get over to dynamic blocks and down to card view. I'll select it, open it up and I can select my data source. It's like my workspace. Select my solution, which is the employee resource center, my app, which is the resources. And I'm just going to select card view because I already have that built out. Well, from here, we can navigate over to content and we can change the title here and the subtitle and so on. We can create inline filters. If we want, we can change the data or fields to display. I'm going to leave all of them available because they are all important to our employee or end user. You can change up your styles and add actions and visibilities based off of if the user is logged in or not, but that's pretty much it. And that's as far as I wanted to elaborate on the easy portal platform, but I just wanted to show you that it is very easy to integrate and authenticate the data source and then to start building within a few clicks. I already had the information available here. Click preview to show you what it looks like. So we can see that all the documents or resources are available here. And if we want to go a step further, we can click this expand and it will show you the information here as well. We can click the attachment to open up PDF, or we can navigate and click the link directly in the line here. Uh, so that's it for this video and this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did hit that subscribe button so you can get more tutorials in the future. Thanks.